Hello guys, in this video we're going to be making this dress for a four-year-old baby. So these are the measurements I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using her shoulder measurement. I'm going to be making this via freehand. So I'll be using her shoulder measurement, her neck width, her, sh her chest, waist, dress length, and then her half length. Her half length is her shoulder to her waist, where this joining happens, this joining. Yep. So let's begin. So the first thing we do is to mark her shoulder, her shoulder measurement divided by two. So I'm going to mark 10 inches divided by 2, which gives me 5. Then we are going to mark her, her neck width, which is 3. I like to make children's um, neck width from 3 and above. That's from 4 years old and above, of course. Just so that they can have um, enough space so that they don't get uncomfortable. So because in this dress, we only need to draft the shoulder to the waist, we are going to be marking her waist next, the waistline. So her half length is 10. So I mark 10 inches and then I include one more inch. Now this one inch here is for this 0.5 is for the joining at the shoulder it's for the joining at the shoulder and then this one is for the joining of the bodies to the skirt part of the dress the skirt part of the dress is just gathers so this 0 0.5 is for that joining so we've gotten her waistline which is 11 originally 10 but we added one inch now we're going to get her bust line <laughs> or chest line considering she doesn't have bust yet so her chest is 24 24 divided by 4 that gives us 6 so I'm going to be marking 6 but before we mark 6 we need a line for us to be able to mark that 6 so now for us to be able to get the bust line we need to divide this 24 divided by 4 which gives us 6 and then we minus 1.5 so I'm, I've taken out 1.5 I'm going to be marking what's left which is 4.5 so this is 4.5 so now I'll mark I'll square the line across like this and this one as well Great, so now we have the bust line and the waistline. Let me mark let me mark this out a little bit. Now the next thing is for us to do the markings here. So her bust is um, her chest is 24 divided by 4 that gives us 6. So I'm going to mark 6 here and then one inch sewing allowance here. The next one is her waist now you know this is the half length so we're going to be marking the waist measurement here her waist is 22 22 divided by 4 that gives us 5.5 so i'll mark 5.5 please note that when you're sewing for babies especially you have to take their exact measurement but when you're sewing when you're drafting your pattern like this when you're doing your markings on paper before you transfer you need to add one to two inches allowance to the main measurement then you now do the division for instance her chest here is 24 i already measured 22 and so i added two so that gives me 24 so you can do the same thing as well take the exact measurement and add some room because their clothes should not be too tight if not you're going to have 
a baby crying all day so we've marked our 5.5 here I'm going to be adding one inch sewing allowance children grow very fast which is why I add one inch so if you need to open up you won't have any issues you still have some room so this is it I don't add that to baby clothing I don't add any form of that because they don't have any curves yet per se that we need to be holding in place now on her shoulder line on this part where we marked the shoulder i'm going to mark 0.5 downwards and then draw this to meet this point like this so this is the baby's shoulder slope now the next thing is for us to decide the neckline and then the armhole so for her for her neckline i'm just going to be using uh, a neck depth of 3.5 so i'll use my french curve to draw this like this so this is her neckline and then for the armhole I just draw the shoulder line to meet this line to meet the bust line this is the bust then we give it a little curve give it a very very little curve So this is her armhole, this is her neckline, this is her bust line, and this is the waist line, inclusive of allowance. So now for you to be able to get the gathers that we need to put here, her waist here is 22. You're going to be cutting 66. That gives us, that's 22 times 3. So the long stretch of fabric you're going to be cutting is 66 so then you have to, you're going to have to gather it to be able to form 22 again uh, when you cut your 66 don't bother to add um, zip allowance you're, you're going to use you're going to take out of your 66 for your zip allowance so the next thing we're going to do now is to cut the fabric and do the sewing So this is the piece we're going to be using for the bodies and then we'll cut the bottom. So now let's just transfer this to fabric. So this is the front piece now well, we're going to cut the back piece and um, when we're cutting the back along the fold you're going to be leaving one inch here for the zip allowance so we place on the fabric and can see that i have one inch sewing allowance here for the zip now for the neckline of this for the back i'm going to be marking just one inch here and then curving it to this side like this so here's one inch mark the same one inch here as well towards the end and then you draw like this So now we have our front piece 
this one and then the back piece I'm going to be cutting this side open of course so I'm still going to paint it down individually because I need to cut the facing so as you can see in the picture you can see that they use the men's shirt fabric for the facing so we're going to be doing that as well for the bottom of the dress I'm going to be manipulating that a bit instead of instead of uh, placing the English fabric inside I'm going to be placing it on top so I'll show you all of that let me get the other fabric great so this is the other fabric I'm just going to place like this so because we have you're going to measure your the remaining the remaining space you have here what I have here is 2.1 so the facing I'm going to cut will just be about 1.5 just 1.5 so when you've placed it like this now you can now adjust the fabric to avoid wastage great so i pin again and then i cut So now I'm going to turn it over like this and then mark my 1.5 Great, so I mark my 1.5 and then I can now cut Great, so this is our facing for this particular one for the front Now for the back of course you place just like we did for the front but then for the back i want the facing to be able to come down like this all the way here because as you can see in the picture the you can see the entire back you can see that it's just covered with this other fabric so i'm going to cut my 1.5 at the shoulder side because i mean we don't have enough fabric here but then i may come down to as much as three here so i'm just going to pin I'm gonna pin here as well since I'm coming down here so we cut the front and then we turn it over like this then I mark my 1.5 here so from there now I begin to go bigger so I'm marking two just here. I'm marking 2.5 here. And I'm marking three here. Can you see that? Great, so now I'm going to cut like this. Great, so you can see the difference in both of them. This one is just <clears throat> this one is just really small, 1.5, while this one is coming all the way down so when we are done sewing this will be the inside so now we are done with the upper part of this of this uh, dress let's cut the bottom part of it so for the bottom of the dress what we need is the waist measurement and then the dress length but now for this dress length we are going to be subtracting this half length so minus 10 here gives us 18 for the waist we're going to be multiplying by three if you're using a thick fabric multiply by two so that the baby doesn't feel too heavy but if also if you don't want it to be too full you can multiply by two or 2.5 but for me i want it to be full my fabric is even light so so i'm going to be multiplying by three so 22 multiplied by 3 that gives me 66 and then so now the length of the bottom that we are cutting is 18 plus 1 inch this 1 inch is for 0 0.5 for the bottom I'm going to be showing you what we're doing with the other fabric at the bottom 
and then another 0.54 joining the top to this bottom part now so let's cut the width is 66 and the length is 19 18 plus 1 that gives us 19 uh, where's my tip? great so I'm going to be cutting like this the length I'm looking for is 19 when I'm cutting I always like to add 0 0.5 because of the way I <laughs> because of the way I tear the fabric so if anything comes off it doesn't eat into my measurements so I'm just going to yes that's it great I'm going to check what we have here what I'm looking for is 66 So here I have I have 45 so I still need to cut more fabric to make it up to 66 so because we want 66 and what we have here is 45 I'm just going to be cutting some extra about 21 inches what we have now is 66 I'm pinning it so we can measure and be sure that what we have is correct you notice that I didn't add um, zip allowance that's because you can just take out of what you have you actually have an excess so just take out of what you have here for your zip allowance so now let me measure again That's 57. That's great. So we have 67.5. Uh, we're going to be joining, of course, like this at the back. So that's even enough allowance that we need. So now we're also going to be cutting the shirt fabric for the bottom here. You know, I told you I wanted to make. Uh, some modification here as opposed to just cutting the fabric and putting it under just like in the picture I'm going to be placing mine on top so basically I'm going to be using it as the hem and as some form of design here so at the hem of the dress this fabric is just going to be on top like this so now I'm also going to cut 67.5 inches but then we're going to be using just We're going to be using just about six inches six inches and then by the time i folded it at the bottom and at the top here i'm going to have five inches so i changed my mind i'll just go ahead and cut seven and <laughs> have six inches as what is outside so these are all the pieces that we'll be joining together this is these two go together because they are the bottom this is the front and the back and I added a belt <laughs> I added a belt so I just cut a long strip of 66 inches and it is 4 inches wide so I have to one for each side let's just go to the sewing machine and do this so now the first thing we're going to do here is to sew our facing to the fabric notch this part to make like a V here because I need to be able to match the middle of the facing to the middle of the fabric and then I sew like this don't forget we're sewing with one quarter so we're going to trim this part trim and notch so that it will be able to slip nicely when we turn it over like this going to top stitch around here with the same uh, one quarter so we've done our top stitching so I'm just going to pin it down the next thing is to go over to the back so for the back 
like I said, I'm going to be putting my zipper first before I put my face in. This is how I normally fix this kind of zip. I'll mark my one, the one inch that we left here for the zip. I'll mark the one inch and then place this like this. But then I need to be mindful of here, so I'm going to start from here. We are sewing with 0 0.25, which is one quarter, so that's be mindful of that. Right, so this is how it looks. So when I turn it over like this and zip up, this is how it's going to look. So you can fix your zip like this. You can turn like this. You can fold in your one inch like this and place here like this and sew right on top of the fabric. But I don't want to see any stitches here. That is why I'm doing this. So let's fix the other side and go on with the sewing. We have this. So this is how it looks out here. Now we can put our facing. I use a lot of pins because I need them. I need everything to stay in place. So we're going to be doing what we did for the front. We're going to cut all of this part open just so we'll be able to turn over we're also going to be top stitching as well you don't have a lot of allowance here so when you're notching you need to be mindful so that you don't cut your fabric so now we top stitch this is how it's going to be so we're going to be sewing this part like this so while you're sewing you're supposed to weave this end all of it but for the purpose of this tutorial I won't be stopping I'll just weave when I'm done with everything so I'm going to sew this down now So by the time we turn it over, this is what it's going to look like. So you can see, we folded this inside. So this is what this part is going to look like. Let's sew the second side. So I've done the facing for both sides. As you can see, and I've joined my shoulder as well. This is what your shoulder should look like in the front. This is what it should look like behind so what you're supposed to do is to place your back on the front here and then bring forward the facing like this you can turn the back on or the front one anywhere you want but basically you're supposed to place both of them like this place both of them and then bring one of the facing to the back and sew 0 0.5 we left 0 0.5 on the paper that's why i use 0 0.5 here if you left less than that use whatever it is that you left so the next thing we're going to do is to sew our belt because we need to attach it to the sides of the blouse so our belt is done i'm going to be putting it like this I'm leaving 0 0.5 here because we're going to be joining the gathers to this. Right, so I'll now cover like this. Because we left one inch on the paper, I'm going to be sewing one inch here and one inch here as well. Great. So if I turn over, this is all we have. We're almost done. All we just need to do now is to work on the bottom part of the dress. So what we need to do now on the bottom part of this dress is to join this one to this one. 
and then to gather the waste of this one so that we can join it here the next thing we are going to do now is to fold this part in like this for everything round so we've pressed here so now I'm going to stitch it down okay so we've stitched, we've stitched here up you can see so the next thing for us is to sew across and stop here because of the zip so this is the skirt part of our of our dress it's ready we just need to gather it now at the waist area for us to form a nice gorgeous dress like this so let's gather the skirt if you have your uh, your pleats foot gathering foot ruffler foot whatever it's called use it as opposed to doing this method i don't have mine that's why i'm using i'm doing this method this method takes longer time but then if you pull while you sew maybe you won't spend so much time so i've done this the the pleat foot the ruffler foot is actually going to give you a neat far neater job than what i have here you can see that is uneven so if you have your ruffler foot please kindly use it uh, so we're going to measure now to be sure that we have the waist that we need this is the blouse what i do is to just place the skirts around the blouse and keep adjusting from there because the the ruffled part of the skirts it just keeps moving so i just keep checking as i go and then i pin So I've pinned the dress all around. I just kept adjusting. It was actually smaller, so I kept adjusting, opening it up until it became the perfect thing. Hey, our dress is coming together. Great, so this is our baby dress. So I'm going to finish up the zip now. I'll finish up the zip. You can see here it's still open. And then would trim here again and then tape it round we use, we are going to be using bias we are going to be using a cotton bias anyway to turn this over so this is the part of the belt where I was saying that we should leave some space for sewing and the other side as well this time around we are working on the armhole because this is obviously too small for a four-year-old that has a chest 24. I'm going to use the method that I've always used for the armhole which is to divide the chest by four and whatever you get minus two from that. So I am going to my chest here is 24 divided by four that gives me six. If I subtract two from six that gives me four. So this is four. So we need to make our mark again. So now this is the new armhole. So we are going to be turning with black bias. great so you can see how it looks after i have sewn it round so do the same thing too for the other side of your dress and if you make a dress like this please tag me on instagram at the only chairman so i can see what you've done don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed thank you guys so much for watching so this is what we have now